So who and what are affected by trade policy? Because trade policy is very controversial in the world, from the riots in Seattle to people walking out of big negotiations because they're worried and scared about they might throw some of their advantages away. And this is made worse by the fact that trade policy is complicated. Yet they're making decisions that change the livelihoods of people um, on a daily basis. And what TradeShift does is to simplify these choices for them, to allow them to analyze, drill down into the data and find details about these um, products and find out what happens if you change the trade policy, who it affects, whether or not there's an environmental impact from increasing or decreasing the output of these goods. And what we think that we've got here is a very robust tool for allowing decision makers to make quick, robust, simple to understand answers about the potential impacts of changes in trade policy. We originally started working on the TradeSift project as a result of some work we did for the Department for International Development, part of the UK government. They then wanted us to think of a conceptual framework for analysing trade policy and uh, analysing regional trade agreements for their own desk officers. So we developed that framework and then we applied that framework in all sorts of studies. So some countries, in particular really, really small countries, will have a small team of trade policy officials, yet they're engaged in negotiations on various aspects of trade policy, both multilaterally at the World Trade Organization or bilaterally with partner countries and so on, yet they don't necessarily have the resources and the skill base to do that sort of analysis. I demonstrated the software at the OECD, I demonstrated the software to the Swedish government and they're all incredibly interested in it. They downloaded the trial licenses and they're talking about buying copies of this for the future, both for their own internal use but also in terms of their work with other countries. We're currently at the point where we're literally about to launch the software. We've run a series of training courses in developing countries already. We've got a big contract from the UK government to run training courses for trade policy officials um, around the world. In the last few months we've done training courses in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, in Arusha in Tanzania and Hanoi in Vietnam. In each case we've had trade officials who have said they really want um, more of their colleagues to have this, saying they're going to go off to donors or their own ministry and try and arrange for funding for another visit. And we've established a community of people we work with and who we feel we've really been able to give a bit of help to and we hope to have an ongoing connection with. The company is based at the Sussex Innovation Centre and the collaboration with the university has been exceedingly helpful for us and been very good. One of the things we're really proud of as well is that out of our current three employees, two of them are Sussex graduates and we're really, really pleased that we've managed to find employment for two people that have been through the Sussex system. We got much more credibility by starting a company, by putting our own time and effort into the startup of that company than we did going around with what we thought was a really good idea and trying to get all the usual suspects to ante up some money for us. But the moment we put ourselves into it, came up with a company, they started believing us.